Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com coming to you from sunny Budapest where it's currently pouring with rain. And this is a tutorial on complex data types using the Java Collections framework. I've got some sample data here and I want to store this data temporarily in memory using Java Collections. And the example that I'm about to show you is inspired by something I saw in a university syllabus. So uh, Complex data structures are an important part of any programming language and uh, it's an important thing to know and you, you also find them on university exams and coursework and stuff like that. So uh, I'm only going to show you a simple example here and in fact in general um, if you know what data you're going to represent in advance very often it's better to define some classes to hold that data like if you've got a list of people with a name and an ID and some other information, you would want to define a, um, a person class and then use an array list, for example, of those people. But sometimes you don't know in advance what kind of data you're going to represent in memory. For example, you're reading an XML file and you don't know what um, nodes that XML is going to have in there or you're reading from a database um, or, or something like that. And for some reason, you, uh, you, you, or yeah, for some reason you can't define any useful classes, and you you want to hold that data in memory, and and that's when you would perhaps use a complex data type. And for the example that I'm about to show you, um, yeah, um, this is a bit of a contrived example, and here I'm not sure if I would define any classes. Maybe this is a good example actually of where you would um, just use a uh, some kind of complex data structure. Well anyway, let's, let's get on to the example. So I just wanted to mention that if you can define classes to simplify this, you should do it rather than resorting to a complex data structure as your first weapon of choice. So here um, I've got a list of emergency vehicles and I'm, I'm, normally this would be, would be reading this from a file or a database or something or JSON server, I don't know. But um, to keep things simple here, I'm just using a 1D and a 2D array list to hold the data. Here's a list of emergency vehicles, and here are lists of drivers that are qualified to operate that vehicle. So um, these drivers can operate an ambulance, these drivers can operate, operate a helicopter, and these ones can run a lifeboat. And these are in order, so the idea is that if we have an emergency that requires, for example, a lifeboat, we go to the appropriate list of drivers or operators and uh, would choose Pete first, but if he's not available, we'll go to Mary, and if she's not available, we'll try Bob. So the, this is an ordered list. And how can we represent this in the memory of the computer? I'm going to rush through this pretty quickly because most of the concepts that you'll see here I've described in previous videos. I just wanted to put one simple example here of a more complicated kind of nested data structure. So ideally uh, you'd want to use a list to hold stuff. Um, it's very quick and efficient to look things up by an index and a list. But here we want to look things up using a string. Uh, so we're going to use a map instead. And the, do we want to use a sorted map? Well no because it doesn't matter what order uh, these these the map keys are in. We just want to throw a key at that map, like helicopter, and get back the appropriate list of drivers. We don't care about the order of the keys. So I won't use any kind of sorted map. I'm just going to use a map. So I'm going to say map here, and we'll define a variable of the interface type, uh, which is often considered good practice, um, because we'll, we'll instantiate specific kinds of maps and sets or whatever, but often once you've instantiated them with new, you'd like to forget about them and just work with common interface methods. So I'm going to say map and the key is going to be string and the value, well again this could be a list but the disadvantage of a list is it doesn't weed out duplicates and we don't want duplicates in this list. If we add Sue a second time we don't want her appearing a second time in the list because it's useless. So instead we'll use a set like this and the key in the set is going to be, uh, well yeah, sets only have keys and it's going to be a string. So um, and let's define a variable here, let's call it 
person personnel like that and add the appropriate inputs with control shift o or command shift o on the map so you see that i'm nesting one kind of interface um uh definition here uh interface um usage within another like this so i've got uh, two finishing with two diamond brackets here because these are nested within this and now we need to instantiate a particular type of map to hold this data and since it's not sorted we can use the most efficient simplest type which is just hash map and put the diamond brackets in again and then round brackets there which you always need with when you're doing new which I've forgotten so let's put new in there there we go and uh, import hash map and if you're using Java 7 you can miss you can just have diamond brackets here and you don't have to repeat all this. If you're using Java 6 or lower, then you will have to repeat all this. It doesn't do any harm, so I'll put it in here anyway, because a lot of people are still using Java 6, I think. But um, if you're on Java 7, you just need the diamond brackets there, and Java will figure out the type, because you've already specified it here. Um, now, the next step is to iterate through the vehicles, and for each vehicle, we need to then get the appropriate list of drivers or operators. And so uh, to correlate these two arrays here, we're gonna need to use an index. So I'm gonna iterate through this array using an index, and I'll use that index to then get the appropriate list of drivers here. So let's say for int i equals naught, i less than, and we wanna iterate from naught to less than the, one less than the, length of this list so let's say vehicles vehicles dot length remember with a simple array list the um the length is stored in the length property uh with a um with a set like a collection type usually use a size method to get the length of it which is a simple property for an array so there's no round brackets there and let's say here via uh, i plus plus and then we can put in the curly parentheses like that and whoops and now i can get the vehicle here and say string vehicle equals via vehicles and square brackets i and i can get the kind of sub array from this 2d array here so i can say string array um, I can't call this drivers because I've already used the name drivers so let's call this drivers list equals drivers and again supply the index um, now we can create uh, our set to hold the drivers and let's say set string and we're actually because we haven't we created the map with new we haven't actually created any sets we've only said that there is going to be a set with this interface here let's say set string driver set equals new and we have to decide what kind of set to use and we know it's going to be a sorted set so that means either tree set or linked hash set and a tree set would sort these in alphabetical order and we don't want that we want them to remain in the order that we add them in so let's say linked hash set and that will remove duplicates for us if there should be any added from our data source there aren't any duplicates here but if there were this would sort them out and now we want to iterate through our list of drivers and add them to the set uh, Actually, I think I think we could do this in one step. Um, I think I think that we could probably supply them here. Let's just try this. Does that work? Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, anyway, uh, for the sake of debugging and making sure we've got this working properly, let's. It's better probably to iterate through the list of drivers. So let's say here for. And we can actually use a for each loop here. I can say string. Uh, well, I can't use driver again, or can I? Have I have I used driver somewhere? No, I haven't. So I can say string driver. 
in driver list and just iterate through. So this is, we've seen this before, if you followed my Java for Beginners course, um, and this is called a for each loop, uh, even though it's um, drivers list, and you've, even though it's, we just use the four keywords still, it's called for each because we're saying for each driver in the driver list here. And we can add those to the set by saying driver set dot add driver. And when we've done that, we can then add the driver um, list to the map. So I can say personnel, that's this map up here, dot put, and the key is vehicle, vehicle, and the value is, the value is driver. No, it's not. <laughs> the value is driver set. There we go. Now, I'd strongly recommend um, that you put a sys out in this loop. So you, you do a system out on the vehicle, and as you go through this inner loop, do a sys out on the driver as well, because um, that will help you have confidence that you are actually putting into your collection the stuff that you expect to add to your collection. But I won't, I won't do that here just to save time but I'd, I'd strongly recommend putting sys out so you can see that, see all the data that you're, you're adding. What I'll do here is I'll just now try to retrieve a particular driver. So let's say we've got an emergency. Um, let's say this emergency requires a helicopter. We can now say, uh, let's say string driver, um, I could say driver one, Let's say, well, what probably what we'd want to do is iterate over all the drivers for a particular vehicle. And then we would look at that list and choose the top guy. And if he's not available, choose the second guy. And if she's not available and so on. So um, let's let's get a get a list from the map. Let's say um, let's say I can use driver list. Uh, I could even use drivers list here because this is scoped to these brackets. So let's 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 anyway, let's say driver drivers list. I'll call it drivers list again to be consistent. Equals it's not gonna be a string actually, it's gonna be a set set of strings. So set of string drivers list equals and personnel dot get and the key, let's say the key's helicopter like that and now I can say for string driver drivers list and whoops I didn't mean to do that I don't even know how I did it let's put in um, alt yeah there we go I've got I need to type crazy keys on this Hungarian Mac to get the right brackets and then let's say here sys out uh, let's say sys out driver like that and then we can just see that so what we what we expect to see now is the list of drivers for the helicopter and that's this list here let's run it and see if we get it run and there we go sue richard bob fred which is sue richard bob fred it's also extremely important to to do some sanity checks and um, ideally you'd create you know systematic tests even j unit tests for this kind of thing but um, at the minimum you know do some run some output maybe create a test method where you uh, get some stuff out of your collection and check that what you've got in it makes sense and of course you could also iterate over this map and um, and print stuff out in fact uh, let's let's do that uh, just to finish off, let's iterate through the whole thing. So if we want to iterate through the whole thing, let's put a, a comment here, example usage. And I, I've gone through iterating through maps before, but admittedly I haven't iterated through a complex data type. So iterate through whole thing would look like this. So it's say four, and we can say, um, uh, Actually, let's, 
uh, let's maybe just get the keys from the map so I can say for string vehicle vehicle in and um, personnel dot keys key set and let's uh, yeah, I think that I think that will work. So we're iterating through this set of keys, and each key is a string. So in the for each loop, we say string vehicle. And again, this is stuff that I've gone through before. And then for each one, we could get the set of let's just copy that the set of drivers. And probably I've got an error because I've already defined that. Um, what I could do is I could just to avoid duplicates, I could, to avoid having a duplicate variable here, I could just enclose this in brackets, which is not a technique that I often use. But if I put um, some brackets in there, then this will be scoped to these outer brackets. Let's just do Control Shift, Control um, Shift F to format. Um, brackets just to scope drivers list variable. So I'm just putting those brackets in so that this only exists between these brackets here and then I can use it again later. So can use again later like that. And this drivers list here is scoped to these brackets and normally the brackets occur because you've got a keyword or a method or something but you can just use them by themselves like that if you want to reduce the scope of a variable. So now we can say here um, we want to get from the personnel the vehicle, the list of drivers for the vehicle, and then go through them and print them out. And what I'll do is I'll just say here sysout and the vehicle. Let's have another. And yeah, and maybe here. I could, let's have a um, system out dot print. So I print the vehicle on the line and then on the net, and then on the same line now, I can print a colon and like that, system out dot print again. And then I print the list of drivers with system out dot print. And let's also have a space like that. And then finally, Let's have a sysout that just uh, just an empty sysout to just produce a new line at the end. And if I run that now, um, I've still got a print line in there. Let's get rid of that. Let's run that. And what I can produce is this formatted list like that, which looks good. Let's just check it. Um, oh yeah, this has got formatted now, which makes it a bit harder to read actually. because I did Control Shift F. But there we go, Pete, Mary, Bob, and um, ambulance. Ambulances, Fred, Sue, Pete. Helicopter is Sue, Richard, Bob, Fred. Helicopter, Sue, Richard, Bob, Fred. So that's, that's all good and they're all in order, notice. It's just that these, their vehicles are in a different order because I stored them in an unsorted map. So that's that's quite enough for this tutorial. It's, it's a long business, um, but I wanted to give you uh, an example of the sort of stuff that I've seen on university um, syllabuses and stuff that's useful to know. And as I say, the basic concept of building up data structures with uh, list sets and maps is common to a wide range of programming languages. So even if you want to learn other languages, this will this will still apply in some form. I'll put this code on caveofprogramming.com so you can look at it and you can use it freely. Um, and in fact, uh, if you go to www.caveofprogramming.com then uh, a lot of people ask me where to find the source code, for example, for Java for Beginners on my multi-threading course. A lot of people are looking, this, looking at this on YouTube or on Udemy and um, uh, for my free courses at the moment to get the source code, you need to go to my website here and I put a comment here now that you have to go to the YouTube video pages down here and these these are all free tutorials and for example um, this 
tutorial that I'm recording now, that's going to be under Java Collections Framework here, and you'll be you'll have a part 13. And if you click on any one of these videos here, you can see the source code. Usually, I've embedded it in a page like this, so you can copy and, and paste if you want. And for for some of them, actually, like the Design Patterns course, I've um, I provided a link to a zip file because. Uh, well, yeah, for those videos anyway that have associated source code. And you, you can also let's just take a look at an example here. So yeah, there's a link to the source code here and zipped up because there's several files involved. And um, you can also follow my courses on Udemy. If you click these icons at the top, you can see some of them are free. And the ones that you have to pay for, they all have free videos. So uh, if you want to learn Java Swing, for example, then um, if you click on this and, uh, well, let's, let's go to an incognito window, you can look at the first videos completely for free. So here, all you have to do is, is click on them and they'll start hopefully playing. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And um, I think this finishes the stuff that I'm going to do on collections, unless you want to make a a request of some kind but I'm going to continue with my um, Java for Beginners course certainly and there's more stuff there and my Java Design Patterns course there's also more stuff to come in in that uh, and um, there'll be more courses from me shortly possibly on Java Spring so um, until next time happy coding <laughs>